Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. She leans in and gives him a kiss. We can provide you with an opportunity to confront Christina. Would you be interested in that? Yes. I'll try to put this on me. Why do you have to get all these hairs? What am I saying? From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't take the lies. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh, Jesus. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Stop! How could you do this to me? Stop! 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 You better get right with God. I love you. I'm so sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to another engaging episode of Cheaters. Please allow me to introduce Michael Jurgen, a young man losing faith in his girlfriend's devotion. Unwilling to be played for a fool, Michael asks cheaters to investigate the matter. Michael Jurgen, age 25, a data administrator concerned that his girlfriend's reticent behavior may irreparably damage their relationship. Commitment, it's just trusting one another completely not even having to, not even, don't have to worry about what the other person thinking or saying because you already know if you already, you know that person so well that you, you know what they're thinking at all times and you just totally have that complete trust in another person. Well, ever since she started going to school and I've started working full time, I mean, seeing that we're both, I'm, in, I'm at work during the day and she's at school during the day, that it wouldn't be a conflict. But it seems like now all the time, you know, she's breaking all these dates and stuff, saying that she has to study for all these classes. And it seems like, you know, I see her less now than whenever before, before she even started school. And it's weird because, you know, we both do stuff during the day, but at night, you know, we're both free. But it seems like I can never, you know, I never get to see her or she's always busy doing something. The most thing that she does to cause tension is pretty much, I can't stand it when she calls and she like breaks dates and stuff. When we have things planned out, you know, really, I go through so much to try to put things together, to try to make, you know, nice evenings for her and stuff like that. And when she goes and calls me at the last minute and cancels, I mean, you know, it makes me feel like I just sat there and wasted my, enti you know, my entire day trying to put that together or all my time. So it just, it really gets to me so much. Well, whenever I weather, it just feels like everything is great. You know, I don't have a care in the world. It's just, it's just me and her, you know? We just like to laugh. We like to, you know, just goof off, have fun. We don't care about anything else. We just hang out and it's just, I miss that. It just seems like it's just gone. It seems like it's never really happening anymore. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Christina Lopez, age 23. A student suspected of concealing numerous secrets from her devoted boyfriend. Investigation day one. After a review of case facts, Cheaters Intelligence assigned several field agents to a local campus where the suspect attends night school. Within moments of being released for the evening, suspect Christina Lopez exits through the front door as Cheaters agents cautiously observe from across the street. A short while later, a large, unidentified fellow approaches suspect Lopez just as she ends a cellular phone call. The two appear to be close acquaintances. Gearing up for mobile pursuit, Cheaters inspectors watch closely as the two advance to suspect Lopez's vehicle. Following a lengthy pursuit, Cheaters agents slow down as suspect Lopez approaches her companion's residence. A peck on the cheek caps off their evening and this particular day of the investigation. Investigation day two. Cheaters field operatives surround suspect Lopez's residence, anticipating her departure to night school. After quite some time, Suspect Lopez exits her home and makes a short drive to the small campus. 
Possibly late for class, Suspect Lopez rushes to the front door, hoping to beat the bell. But before she can reach the door, her companion, whose identity is withheld, heads her off at the pass. The two squabble for a moment before peer pressure convinces Suspect Lopez to play hooky. The truant duo then departs the campus for a more private setting. With a different kind of education in mind, Suspect Lopez and her companion visit a local park where Romance 101 commences without a hitch. After passing the course, Suspect Lopez and her private tutor hit the pavement for several miles to a local movie rental store. The two browse the aisles, apparently unable to agree upon a title of choice. Avoiding unwanted attention, Cheater's P.I.s remain cautious as the couple prepares to leave the store. After a short drive, Suspect Lopez pulls into her companion's residence, where the two disappear behind closed doors. Several hours later, Suspect Lopez re-emerges and heads back home without further incident. Investigation Day 4. Determined to gain further insight, Cheater's investigators revisit Suspect Lopez's residence after discussing the matter at headquarters. On stakeout for several hours, Cheater's field operatives finally spot Suspect Lopez as she heads out for the evening. Hot on the trail, Cheater's P.I. stay alert as she parks her car and advances indoors. A short while later, Suspect Lopez and her companion exit the apartment and promptly depart the vicinity. Upon arrival at a restaurant, Suspect Lopez and her companion hold each other tightly as they approach the front door. Once inside, all remaining inhibitions are cast aside as the two throw back a stiff drink and publicly exhibit their true feelings for each other. In the meantime, Michael receives nothing but lip service in this recorded phone call with Christina. At this point, Cheater's intelligence has no other alternative but to inform Michael of his false-hearted girlfriend. Coming up, the confrontation. With Christina's betrayal now established, Cheater schedules a meeting with Michael to go over the findings. Having to face an uphill battle, Michael bolsters his resolve as the moment of truth draws near. Michael, thanks for being here tonight. I know that you contacted the show initially because you had some concerns about what was going on in your relationship with Christina. Michael, I know this is something that has been troubling you for a while. Are you ready to take a look at some of the information that our detectives have been able to gather? I have to. On this day in the investigation, our detective observed Christina. She arrived at a school that she's been attending. As she exited this particular evening, she has a brief conversation with a gentleman. They both get into her car, drive to a coffee shop that's close by. After having something to drink, they both get into her car. They do drive to a residence that we're assuming this is the apartment of this gentleman. As he opens the door to get out, she leans in and gives him a kiss. And I know that clearly that's upsetting to you. I'm sorry that this is how this investigation started. On this day, our detective followed Christina traveled directly to the apartment of this gentleman. After picking him up, they traveled to a restaurant. Our detective was able to go inside, and while there, we observe some of their behavior, and you can see. <laughs> and I know this is upsetting, and I apologize that this is the manner that you had to find this out. 
as they leave, they stop off at a drugstore, go inside, pick out some items. As they come out of the drugstore, she tosses him a bag where a detective followed them. And I know that's not something that you really need to see. As you see this, Michael, I know that on a number of different levels, it's got to be devastating for you. And I understand that. One of the reasons that you came to us was to find out what was happening so you can put yourself at ease and you can put your mind at rest. Where did Christina think you were going to be this evening, Mike? Just at home. We can provide you with an opportunity to confront Christina so you can ask her directly what her intentions were as far as you were concerned and regarding your relationship. Would you be interested in that? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna call the detective right now just to find out what's going on. Okay, hang on. Yeah, we just finished a briefing. Tell me what you got. He picked her up at her apartment. Okay. I'll stay close, we'll be on standby. Just keep me posted if there's anything. All right? We have a team of detectives that are following them right now. He picked her up this evening. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, come this way. Oh, wait, hang on. Hello? Yeah, we're on the move. Yep, all right, I see it. Okay, they're in front of the car that's got the trunk up. See that car, that white one? All right, we're coming in right now. Second entrance, go in the second entrance. Okay. All right, here we go, go into the fence, pull into the fence. Come out this side. Come out this side, Michael. Stop. Stop right here. Come on. Christina? Christina? Hey. No. Where'd she go? Please. What is going please. on? What is going on? Oh my god. We're... Get these cameras out of my face. I'm serious. What I'm not this? joking. Wait, Michael, what the hell? Please, I'm sorry. I saw hey, somebody cool showed me on the Hey, dude. Come on. Guys, seriously, stop it. Out, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Coming up, the conclusion. I saw the footage, I saw what? What no. footage? They showed me, they've been following you. They showed me what you've been doing. How could you do this? Why couldn't you just come to me and ask me about this? I don't try to put this on me. Damn, my whole family's gonna see this, you're gonna do this. Me on television? Meet you. you. Come up to me. You. And just ask me about Whoa, this. Oh, you. I'm sorry. What about me? Okay, I'm oh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh yeah, it's but all it's about you. With. Oh, yeah, it's all about you. She told me she was breaking it off. We met in class. She said I have a boyfriend. Things are rocky. I'm gonna break it off. So we started hanging out. How long had that? How long has that been? Weeks. We we had something. We, yeah, we well, we had it, something. Okay, didn't okay, we? It oh happened. yeah, I'm it was, sorry. It was great. I'm yeah. sorry, it happened. We were so good that you had to run off with whoever. You had to run off with the Hulk over there. Get out of my face. Please, baby, please. Just you guys get out of here. Please. Get out of my face, dude. Put this on me. Don't try to put this on me. Why do you have to get all these cameras in my face? Oh. Are you all right? <laughs> well, are you gonna pay for my uh, car? Hey. What? What? Easy, gentlemen. Easy, guys. Car? You just threw that guy on top of my car. Okay. Was it damaged? We'll get you taken care of. Can we just get somewhere and talk, just face to face, me and you, without without him? Please, please. Hmm. go home. Please, just go home. Just Damn. Damn, man. I don't want you around me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did it, and there's no going back, and there's no taking it back. Oh, there's nothing I can do about it.
I didn't know whether I wanted to move away and be with you forever, because I mean, what if it, what if it doesn't work out? Then I'm screwed. I'm stuck out there with nobody. But Michael, I love you, and if you, if that's what you really want to do, then let's talk about it. Let's figure something out. Mm, no. Two I'm years is a long about, time to throw talk. away. I know. You should have thought about that first. You should have thought about that first before you went out and did what you did. Following the confrontation, Michael immerses himself into the pursuit of his career. Please stay tuned as Cheaters discloses his future plans. But next, Cheaters presents Corey Lee, a previous suspect owning up to the responsibility of breaking his boyfriend's heart. Corey confesses his deceitful behavior in hopes of making amends. Corey Lee. Age 28, Corey consents to a discussion with cheaters concerning his careless handling of a boyfriend's feelings. Well, at first I didn't know what was happening, and you know, things like that happen. Things are always being filmed in New York, and you see all sort of strange things. So I wasn't taken back at first. Um, it wasn't until I saw Lynn that I kind of was wondering what was up, and it was kind of a compromising position because I was with Bri as well, and I was really shocked and then also concerned because I wasn't sure what was happening immediately and I really didn't understand until Joey started talking to me later on and then you know, getting that aspect of it made me start to get the bigger picture. Come on, man. Corey, uh, can you explain to Lynn what you're doing with this gentleman? Please, Lynn, with Where are you going? Where are you going, huh? Where are you going? Calm down. Huh? Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm. What are you doing? It's not, it's not what Who the hell is? Who is, is he? What the? Who is Lynn? Calm down. Who the Calm down. down. What's going on? Lynn wouldn't would speak to me actually for several weeks, and almost, almost like a month and a half. I tried calling him. He hang up. He wouldn't receive my calls. A lot of our mutual friends knew I was in the wrong, so they weren't relaying messages to him. They were all, basically, it was kind of me, about myself, because everyone sided with him and. Um, I understand that, but ultimately Lynn gave in and we agreed to have coffee and we had coffee and decided to work things out or try our best and now we've been together for two years. I, I'm really sorry, I really messed up, I really, really messed up. Yeah, you I'm have really, you know, a lot. I don't know what you've seen or what you saw, but I, I'm sure if I know what it was, I can explain everything, I just... No, you can't explain. Y yeah, no... I can. All right, I just... We'll give you a ride back to wherever you need to go, okay? All right. We're right over here. If somebody caught me cheating and doing what I did to Lynn, I would definitely... Don't know if I'd have the good grace or the patience to be as forgiving as Lynn has been to me. I think I'm very lucky, um, but I definitely would have considered it cheating, not having fun. I mean, having fun and cheating, I'm not sure where I was at at that point in time. Um, definitely was, it's hard to say I was having fun. I was really lost and I um, guess it wasn't fun, but it was cheating and really happy that Lynn has decided to give me a second chance. Disgusted by the entire situation, Michael Jurgen chooses to end all association with Ms. Lopez. Although he still cares for his philandering ex-girlfriend, Michael insists his once existent love for her dwindles day by day. At times, Michael reports he has urges to call Ms. Lopez, but instead relies on his best friend to convince him otherwise. Desiring reconciliation, Christina Lopez says that Michael owes her an opportunity to make the relationship work. She claims that Michael is an ardent believer in offering second chances and cannot understand why he refuses in this particular instance. With tears in her eyes, Ms. Lopez admits she made a careless mistake that does not warrant terminating a once-in-a-lifetime relationship. Ms. Lopez says that Michael is her soulmate and, if forgiven, will be the best wife any man could ever have. As for his involvement, Ms. Lopez's romantic interest swore up and down that she said her relationship with Michael was over weeks before the confrontation. Now that he knows the truth, he offers Michael an apology for grabbing him during the confrontation. 